got your Bibles, John chapter 14. You just jump on in. Oh, man. It's, uh, wow. That, that, I, I, I so in my spirit about the provisional things. And I know God's, got, like I said, going to take care of anything. The I am is in the house. So don't, don't leave without what you came to get. And, uh, you know, you might not have come in here even knowing you needed something. Uh, there's been many times the Lord just brought something to my attention that I didn't even know was a need until he revealed it. And, uh, but, uh, but he was right there and on time. And, and uh, man, God is just so good that way, isn't he? John chapter 14, uh, I don't know if it was Wes already kind of sang this or, or kind of alluded to this earlier. But, uh, man, such a powerful chapter. You know, he starts off with letting out your heart be troubled. Man, that's a, that's a dose of medicine we all need in this uh, tumultuous time we're living in. Amen. And, uh, but let's drop on into uh, verse 23. Uh, sorry, I'm going to back it up a little bit. I gave him verse 27, I think, in the notes. But uh, verse 23, Jesus said, if a man love me, he will keep my word. And the reason I wanted to back up to this is uh, the time we're living in, a lot of people love the concept of Jesus, but you can't separate Jesus from his word. You can't separate Jesus from his word. You, you can't love Jesus and not love his word. And, and we see a lot of that going on. They, people have a concept of, of Jesus. They love the idea of Jesus. But when he starts, you know, when, when you start dealing with his word, and his word starts dealing with us. Uh, sometimes it doesn't always set well, you know, with the flesh. And a lot of people don't, don't want that. Uh, but, and, and they think they have Jesus. Uh, but I think this statement pretty much clarifies. You, you can't have Jesus and not have his word. And you can't truly love Jesus and not love his word. Amen. That's not my word. That's his word. He said, my father will love him. And we will come and we will make our abode, have our dwelling place with him. He that does not love me does not keep my sayings. And the word you hear is not mine, but it is the Father's which sent me. These things have I spoken unto you being yet present. But the Comforter, which is the, who is the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things. Very important here, verse 26. And bring things to your remembrance, whatever I have said unto you. So even if, even, as long as you've got it on the input, God can get it to you. Uh, someone was going through a test recently. And I said, you know, I believe this scripture actually applies to, you know, that as well, not just the spiritual things. But if you study to show yourself approved in those areas, then when you're in a test, you don't need to have test anxiety. I believe the Holy Spirit, I, our kids need to understand this as they're going back into school, already in school, I guess. You know, but as they apply themselves, they, they don't have to have that fear going into a test environment. If they've done right by the Lord, the Lord is going to do right by them. But how are they going to call on someone they don't have an awareness of? How are they going to know how to apply a word they've never heard before? So parents, it's up to us to teach our kids, train them up. And, uh, and for you and I as well, if you're on a job, you're taking a job application, doing things like that, if you've applied yourself, then you can rely on the Holy Spirit to bring that back to your remembrance. And uh, the person said, hey, man, he said, I leaned in, Holy Ghost got me and passed the test. Come on, God can pass, he can get us past all our tests, Amen. He said, he will show you even things. He said, he'll bring to us remembrance. And another scripture says, he'll actually show us things to come. He says in verse 27, peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Not like the world has. He says, so let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. He goes on and he says, you've heard how I said, I go away and I will come again. And if you love me, you would rejoice because I said, I go to my father. For the father is greater than I. And I'm telling you these things before it comes to pass that when it does, you will believe. Verse 30, he said, Hereafter I will not talk much with you, for the prince of this world comes, but he has nothing in me. Father, in Jesus' name, give us eyes to see, give us ears to hear. I thank you, Lord. We've got willing and obedient hearts to, to receive what you have for us tonight. Lord, I know you're taking us from glory to glory. It's already begun. So, Lord, help us to not not be in opposition to this progress and in this process, but God, I thank you that you bring a clarity and wisdom and insight and revelation to us, Lord, so that we leave on a different level than we came in. God, we leave with a greater empowerment than ever before to do what you put us on this planet to do. We thank you that it has already begun, and you will continue to keep it going in Jesus' name. Amen. No place for the devil, what I'll talk about tonight. And uh, I don't know about you, but the first question that comes to my mind is How? <laughs> How do I give him no place? Well, how did Jesus do it? Hebrews chapter 4. I know you got a questioning mind. Uh, what is it? What's that old thing? Inquiring minds want to know. 
And uh, some of y'all might be too young to remember that, but that's all right. You can Google it later. <laughs> Hebrews chapter 4. How did Jesus do it? We're going to look and see what he did. Chapter 4, verse uh, 14. Hebrews 4, 14. It says, seeing if we have, we have such a great high priest that has passed on into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession, talking about our declaration, our faith, our platform that we're believing in. For we do not have a high priest which cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities. Yes, actually, he was touched in all points, tempted as we are, yet without sin. What? Yes, he went through everything we went through so that we don't really have to, and he understands where we are. I don't know if anybody's ever had a conversation and, and, and the person you're speaking with, well, just nobody can identify with me. Nobody can understand me. Is that, I don't know if that's ever come up with you or not. But the Bible says, contrary, Jesus was tempted in every fashion, went through everything, every scenario that we could possibly ever face and probably beyond anything we will ever face. And he did it without sin so that he could show me and you how to do it. Woo, that's mind-blowing. That's mind-blowing. You know, something else, I'll, I'll just touch on that for just a second, because uh, I've had conversation where people say, well, I just, I don't know if I can trust anybody if they've never been through what I've been through. How are you going to advise? That sounds right, but it's absolutely wrong. That's pleasing to the flesh, and it's actually a cop-out, because if you can't receive from me because I haven't, in a sense, walked in your shoes... How can you receive from Jesus because he never sinned? Come on. Y'all have had conversations, right? Well, you've just never been in my shoes, so you don't know what I'm going through, so you can't minister to me. That's a lie. Number one, it's not me ministering. It's the Holy Ghost on the inside of us. And if by that argument, you just shut out Jesus from being able to help you out. Come on. You just, sometimes you just got to confront in love, but still love corrects. You know, because ultimately, at the end of the day, if we don't interrupt that mindset, they will never get free. They will never get free. We got to get them off of flesh and blood and look into Jesus, the author and the finisher. Amen. Now, I know that'll, that'll help us down the road. He said, we don't have a high priest who cannot identify. He can identify in every way, and he can show me how to never do it again. Because he said, he did it without sin. So let us come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain, his 16 is a key, that we can obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. By the sacrifice he made and paid for us, we can come to the throne and get grace. We can get an empowerment. We can get strength. We can get wisdom. We can get whatever we need to get us through whatever we're facing. Whatever, you know, but I mean, at the same time, we're already thinking, well, he did it and he didn't sin. I may as well give up because I have committed quite a few. Y'all don't have to help, but that's all right. <laughs> Actually, that was painful the way y'all were so silent right there, but that's okay. So we got something for us, you know? So how, how do we do that? If I've already sinned, how do we get where he's at if I've already messed up? The blood of Jesus, number one. But number two, Proverbs chapter four. Just because we did it don't mean we got to do it again. Not if we can learn something, Right? But Proverbs chapter 4, we're going to give us some insight. Verse 23, we'll just go to one. The whole thing is good, but for time's sake, we're going to condense it down. We'll just pull this one out. Keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it are the, what, issues of life. Uh, one, one translation says, out of your heart sets your boundaries, your, your borders. It's like guardrails. Keeps you from running in the ditch. Out of your heart. What's in can bring refinement and direction and keep us in, in check. And uh, so how do we do that? How do we keep, how do we guard our heart? I can't do it for you. You can't do it for me. But there's some things we can see in the word tonight that we can apply so that we can keep ourselves out of a mess. And that's where I think it's real important coming in. I, I was wondering like, Lord, why is this so imperative that I feel in this tonight? And, and, and number one, we all need it. But especially for our kids going back in school, they're bombarded by stuff. They're going to be surrounded by stuff. And it's up to you and I. We've got to sometimes give them some, some guidelines and, and hopefully this will help you. And if you don't have kids, this will help us. But we've got to guard our heart by guarding our environment. Come on, say guard my environment. Guard our environment. Uh, 1 Corinthians 15, said evil communications bring corruption. So we've got to give no place to the devil. And some of it's just very practical. And then you'll see what, what I mean when we get to it. Second Thessalonians. 
been a while since we've been into the Thessalonian book. The second Thessalonians in chapter 3. Verse 6, it said, now we command you, brethren, and this is, of course, by the unction of the Holy Ghost. They weren't as a person trying to command us. They were, you know, authoring this by, the, by Paul writing this under the unction of the Holy Spirit. But he said, I command you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, withdraw. Woo, that's strong language. Say withdraw. He said withdraw. Don't tolerate. Don't hang around. Withdraw yourselves from every brother that walks disorderly. Wow. How do you guard your heart? It's very practical, but very powerful. Separate yourself. Don't allow it. Don't, don't, don't let those conversations pollute you. Don't let those things water down your faith or, or tear down, you know, your self-esteem. So many of our kids are getting beat up because they're just staying in conversations they should be walking away from. And they got to know it's okay to walk. They got to know it's okay that you don't have to put up with that. You don't have to be somebody's dumping ground. You're not waste management. You don't take people's trash. Amen? Come on. You know, quit letting people guilt them into doing this or not doing that. Or, you know, if you love me, you would do this. No, if you love me, you wouldn't ask me to do. Matter of fact, you ain't asking me out of love. You're asking me out of lust to sell myself or give myself over. I, come on. I mean, this is powerful, and our kids need this kind of equipping. Some of us adults need, well, that's all right, <laughs> right? Because peer pressure don't stop when you graduate. As a matter of fact, sometimes it gets magnified. Where y'all live at? Why you want to look down on me for where I live at? What you driving? What difference does it make? Is yours paid for? <laughs> that's, that's what I want to come back at, you know? It's... Uh, you know, it's amazing. It's, uh, man, my, God gave my wife and I, an ex, I mean, just a, a crazy deal on a, on a pretty high-end car uh, several years back. It was, a, it was a Mercedes, and it was really, really, and it was, and I had a guy look at me, and, oh, yeah, man, they must be paying y'all pretty good. I said, I bet I paid less for mine than you paid for that Toyota you're driving. <laughs> and I paid for mine in cash. You know, and she, sometimes you just got to shut them up in Jesus' name. Because I just. You know, people can just be stupid sometimes. And I, maybe I shouldn't say it like that. But I did, and it is. Because they are. And they get these religious ideas and these religious mindsets and try to qualify or quantify or stick you in a box. And a lot of times we have church that isn't outspoken because we're trying to pacify. Pacification ain't got us nowhere except backwards. Jesus don't back up. Now, we need to do it in love. We need to do it in love. But love is not an excuse. Just help me, Jesus. Stay on point. Sometimes, mm, I can't say that the way I need to say that. But they do. You need to open their eyes. Because they headed, they, with that mindset, they're headed off a cliff. You know, they're judging, and they don't even realize they're judging. They're being critical, and they don't understand. Man, that's one of the worst things you can do is open yourself up to a critical spirit. Begin to look for a devil or a demon after, under every bush and looking for, I mean, you start looking for bad, that's all you're going to find is bad. We got to teach our people to look for the good. Man, I, I forget, I think it was Dale Carnegie. Uh, may, may, somebody, y'all can Google it and tell me later. But he said, uh, you, you don't, when, you, when you're looking for gold, you have to sift through tons and tons and tons of dirt. But you, look, you find what you're looking for. And you got to be willing to sift through the tons and tons and tons of dirt to find the gold. We gotta, we, we're, we're gold. I shouldn't say we're gold diggers. That had a bad connotation back in the day. We're gold miners. We find the gold that God put in somebody because everybody breathing's got gold in them. We find the gold and we pull it out. Amen? Amen. But sometimes finding the gold means the refiner's fire too. To get the impurities out. He said, mark those, he said, and withdraw from every brother. He's not even talking, oh, come on now. 
He's not even talking in a worldly sense. He, he may be talking. Because everybody in church don't have church in them in a sense. He said, it's time. He said, I mean, we know it's, I mean, the cleansing starts in the house. Every brother that walks disorderly and not after the tradition which you've received of us. Now, he's not talking about religion. He's talking about the faith, the faith walk. You know, the, the Jesus stuff, we'll call it that, all right? Jump over to verse 14. He says it again. If any man obey not our word, and this is by this epistle, by, by the word of God, note that man and have no company. Now, that's strong. That is really strong. Now, understand what he's saying. Don't take it out of context. Got to make sure. He says, have no company. Or, 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 or what, he, what he's talking about here is close fellowship. Because when you closely associate with people who are blatantly in error. It, it, your association is agreement. Now he goes on and he keeps us in context of, of our love walk because we got to do it in love. Everything. He said, yet don't count that person as an enemy. You can't, you can't push them out. You can't push them away in a sense. You got to thank God for the, all I know is thank God for the Holy Ghost. Because every situation we walk through is different. Everything, every person we deal with is different. And, and, and it is impossible for me to tell you how to do this, but he can. He can. You know, it's like, Lord, how in the world? When you need it, I'll get it to you. He'll show you. That's what I'm, I'm saying. He'll show you how to do, what to do, what's, what to say, what not to say, when to say it. Because just because something needs to be said don't mean we always, there's a timing involved as well, right? But all of that, he will give us. That's why it's so imperative we hear his voice. We hear his voice. Don't count them as an enemy, but admonish. What does that mean? That's a, that's a King James word. It means warn them as a brother. Warn them as a brother. Warn them as a brother. And this is not the first time I wrote myself a note that this is in Scripture. We, we, shouldn't, although we shouldn't need more than one word from God. We shouldn't, but he's given us more because sometimes we're a little hard-headed. But anyway, because let me just put it in a practical application. Uh, first trip we went to Israel, uh, we were going, and we, man, we got to see a, a lot of different places, a lot of different sites. And we're coming down this one place, and I mean, and the man, it's got like this giant fence and barbed wire and razor. And, and then all of a sudden, you see these red signs on there. And, uh, you know, obviously, I can't read the language, but you know what the X means. I mean, it, don't go there. You know, there's just certain things that's kind of universal. And so, again, obviously, got the curiosity up, right? What meaneth this sign? You know, <laughs> King James, right? We're over in the Holy Land. We got to talk King James. <laughs> no, nah, it's... What's this mean? That's a minefield. Now, how many signs do you need to stay out of a... <laughs> Why do we think this is any different. Matter of fact, this is more critical. <laughs> you walk in a minefield, you just get dead. <laughs> right? I don't mean that bad, but I'm just saying, if I'm saved, I'm still going to heaven. You ain't got Jesus, you don't make it in. It's critical. It's critical. It's critical for our kids to keep this. And we got, I said, we got several. You don't need no Jonas in your boat. Romans chapter 16. Or Jonah, I mean, not Jonas. Romans chapter 16. I mean, there's several of these, and I want to pull them out because, like I said, I really feel like, you know, going back into school, and, but even as us adults, we all need this. We, we need this word. We need this emphasized in us. It's okay to walk away. It's okay to, to not fit in. Sometimes the best thing that ever happened to you is not fitting in that thing, in that situation, in that click, you know. Sometimes I wrote myself a note. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I wrote myself a note a long time, and I stuck it on my computer. Sometimes man rejection is God's protection. We just don't recognize it. Thank you for not welcoming me in because all that thing went sideways, and I'd have been right up in there if I... And our kids need to understand that, and you don't have to have their approval to have God's 
That's my kid, approval. Is that making all right? We, we good? Romans 16, verse 17. He says it again here. You're going to see it several times. I'm going to give you a lot of, lot of uh, spiritual ammunition in a sense just to know, you know, God ain't playing when he said, you ever, your mama call you by your first and your middle name, then you know. I mean, this is like God calling us by the first and middle name. Or all three, then you, you better say it. <laughs> I heard one brother say, if he calls you by all three names, just go ahead and hit your knees. <laughs> oh, Lord, whatever I did, I didn't mean to do it. You're right. Romans 16, 17, I beseech you. He said, I'm begging you, brothers, mark those which cause division and offenses contrary to the doctrine which you have learned and hang with them. Avoid them. He, he is at a point where he's not, he's saying don't even debate. Don't even get drugged into an argument. Because all it is is a setup from the enemy to rob you of your time. Now, if the Holy Ghost unctions you, you follow that unction. But if it's not an unction from the Holy Ghost, back away. That's what he said. Avoid them. He goes on in verse uh, 18. He says, for they are such as serve not our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own need, their own belly. And by good words and fair speech, they deceive the hearts of the innocent. Man, that's powerful, y'all. And we got too many kids that don't, uh, boy, we, I, we're all God's kids. You know, a lot of times, you know, if we don't know this and we're, we're doing or trying to fit in or we're still, you know, allowing uh, just our flesh to lead us, man, we can get set up real quick to be hurt. And God's doing a lot here to keep us from getting hurt. A lot. You know, I man, now he can take care of a broken heart, but a lot better if he never got broke than to have to fix it. And a lot of this, if we just would ap- apply a little on the front side, we wouldn't need so much on the, on the other side. Y'all, the old saying, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. I believe that's in scripture somewhere. Avoid sin like the plague, 1 Timothy chapter 6. I mean, it's in here several times, several times. Got a lot of stuff going on, and it's, it's easy to, you know, the elections are, and, and all this and all that, and just pay real keen attention to the Word. And that's all I got to say about that. First Timothy chapter 6, some of y'all, some of y'all, just, I'm sorry, that's probably a, might not have been the best reference, but. First Timothy 6, I, I can't even find Timothy now, Lord, I'm sorry, I, I just, help me. <laughs> It says, yeah, right before the second one. Thank you. I, yeah. All right. First Timothy 6. Mm. Golly, he's good. You know, I just, I, let me come back. Thank you, Lord. I, I just, I, I'm, you know how you listen to some things and you know it's, it, it, it might come up at a certain point. We know God's a healer physically, right? And, and, but you need to understand God can heal broken hearts too. I heard some teaching on a brother, and it really just began to bear witness. I'm still, uh, he said that we need to really guard uh, getting into this, I, I'm, just, I'm just a broken person. Not if you know Jesus. We may have been broken. We may have been, and I don't deny we may have, what we may have been, but it's not who we are. And you don't need to be claiming that over yourself anymore. The Bible says if any man's in Christ... They're a new creature. They're a new creature. Uh, I, you know, the, the blind man, I, once, I was blind, but now, but now that I've come to Jesus, I'm not that anymore. We may have been broken, you, but I'm, I'm going to tell you right now, in the name of Jesus, you are not damaged goods. You are not damaged good. And quit letting the devil beat you up. With that thought, you need to arrest that thing in the name of Jesus. Cast it down and never let it back in. You are not damaged goods. Not when Jesus is in you. Amen. So, Father, whoever that's for, if it's somebody online tonight or Lord, if it's a conversation we may have with our kids coming up. I thank you for an empowerment and I thank you for an equipping tonight. Lord God, to we'll be able to subdue them demons in Jesus' name. And give them no place. We're talking about giving the devil no place. Giving him no place, you no room in my family because I ain't got damaged goods in my family. My sons, my daughters, our family, our, our spouses, us, us, 
us. And I thank you, Lord God, that even, Lord, you're equipping us even before some of these conversations come up. God, you're already getting us ready, geared up, geared up. Stay ready, we ain't got to get ready. So I thank you, Holy Ghost, for your prep time tonight in Jesus' name. Woo, amen. I mean, that's straight up word. He says he binds up the brokenhearted. Isn't that what he said? And, and Jesus even said in, in uh, I think it's Luke, this day, this is fulfilled. So if it was that day, it's shown up as today. Amen. So even if don't, don't, uh, you may, a, a loved one may not be with you anymore, but don't get caught up in a spirit of grief. You know, my mom and dad both in heaven. I'm going to see them real soon. That's not a negative confession. You know, in God time, we ain't got but a couple hours left. A day like a thousand years? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I got all the time in the world. Really? <laughs> you, you, better know, you better know where your permanent address is. That's all right. I know. I'm, just, I'm meddling. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 3. If any man teach otherwise and consent not to wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, he's, talk, he's not talking about religion. He's talking about B-I-B-L-E. That's the book for me. I stand alone on what y'all don't know that either. Golly. Man, we got to get some Bible school going back up. <laughs> Consent not to wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, and to the doctrine which is according to godliness, he's proud knowing nothing. So that's why you, 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 you can't debate. You're not going to be able to win an argument. So don't, uh, he's, he's just saying don't, don't try. Don't get drug into it. Here we go. He said they're, they're proud. They don't know really anything. They're doting about with questions and strifes of words. He said, and where I've come envy and strife and railings and evil, all this mess, disputings of men, corrupt minds, destitute, and all this stuff. From such, verse 5, withdraw yourself. Withdraw yourself. There are, there are people that, I don't even know how to put that correctly. Let's just wait. Uh, Proverbs 12, 26, the righteous shall choose their friends carefully for the way of the wicked leads astray. We're talking about how to give the devil no place, but some very practical application of even in a physical or, or a, just guarding your heart and, and, and stepping away from environments that are wrong or bad for us. And uh, it's, it's, it's just some powerful application that we need to get. Amen. Second Timothy, just hang a right, go over 2 Timothy chapter 2, and verse 22. We're guarding our heart. We're, we're shutting down the devil. He said, flee youthful lust. Follow after righteousness, faith, charity, peace. With them, I'm going to say with them. With them. See, you, you need to surround yourself, not just to walk away from what's not good for you. Be around what is. Be around what is good for you. You know, try to surround yourself. I mean, we have so much good. And we have, uh, I mean, there's so many podcasts and, and these words and stuff we have out there now that you can avail yourself to and get teaching, good, solid Bible teaching. Amen? You know, and if you're listening to something and, and it sounds good, but, you know, let the Holy Spirit, I mean, and if, and if something comes up, just click it off. You know, click it off. But, I mean, it's just avail yourself to it. He said, and be around those that call on the Lord out of a pure heart. Verse 23. But foolish and unlearned questions, avoid. Avoid. Don't feel like you have to answer. Well, I, you, you're supposed to be, well, I, no. He told me I can walk. He, he told me I don't, I don't have to stay in this conversation. I don't have to engage with this. I don't have to open myself up to this. I, 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 I've been in that trap. And I feel like sometimes it's like somebody does something and they feel like, I got to defend God. You think he need my defense? Please. That's, that's, that's pride looking for a way to manifest in me. I'm going to jump up and defend God. <laughs> really? Like he don't need it. Who are you trying to make feel better? He said, walk. When the Holy Spirit says, walk, walk. Amen. Y'all look at me like crazy, but it's okay. 
Foolish and unlearned questions avoid knowing that all they do is gender strife. Man, this is freedom, y'all. This is absolute freedom. This, 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 this I, I, I hope flesh ain't coming out too much on me tonight. But this means, oh, I can't do that. Anyway. <laughs> I want to, and the servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle. He ain't been gentle tonight. I, be nice. <laughs> Apt to teach, be patient in meekness, in, in verse 25, instructing those that oppose themselves. But you, gonna, you can only, the Holy Spirit is the only one who can reveal those moments to us. When it's time to move and when it's, you know, growing up on a farm, you know, you didn't plant in the dead of winter. Not corn seed. And you could plant winter rye because it's made to be planted in rye. But if you plant a seed in the wrong season, and we're talking about planting the seed of the word, who better to know when to plant the seed of the word than the Holy Spirit who is, in essence, the word. He says, do it. You better do it because you'll answer to him for not doing it. What I, I, man, that's just so much coming back to me uh, on, on this teaching that I've been in. But he said, well, that blood's going to be on my hands. That's out of context. Blood's on your hands if you didn't say what he said to say when he said to say it. Right. It's not a general rule that everybody's blood's on your hands. It's too much for us. <laughs> it's too much for us. Can't handle all that. Well, I, didn't, I didn't lead him in the prayer. <laughs> One plant's. Another waters. Come on, man. I, I, I hope we're lightening some load tonight. We got to get religion off because it, it, it interrupts relationship. If I'm trying to do this and listen to my will, it's going to be very difficult for me when I need to discern his voice and his will. The more in step I am with him, the more ready I am, and then I don't miss those opportunities. We're talking about not giving place to the devil. Amen. In meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves, if God peradventure will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth, that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil. The only way they're led into, or any of us are led into the snare of the devil, is we're not being led by the Spirit of God. We're learning how to shut the devil down and keep him out and give him no place. And part of that comes from a very just a practical stepping away sometimes. Not getting in those environments, but per, on purpose and intentionally putting myself, immersing myself in the right environments. Woo, preacher, preacher, that's awesome. Oh, my okay, 2 Timothy chapter 3. Well, that's where we was. Uh, no, no, we are, that's right, let's keep going. Yeah, chapter 3, verse 1. Yeah, right on down. He said, this know or understand, and we know we are, we are right in, in, in this. Last days, perilous times will come. Men will be lovers of their own selves, covetous, proud, blasphemers, all this list of stuff that's just ought to be obvious. Verse 5, having a form of godliness but denying power again. What's he saying to us, church? From such, walk away. I mean, man, he, you know he's not repetitive for his sake. It's for us. Man, he really, really wants us to see this. We, we set ourselves up for harm. Because we get guilted in the stuff and we're trying to fit in and trying to do this and trying. And man, if there was ever a time where he's saying, take my yoke. Come on, guys. Come on. You're hurting and I got an answer. Not me. Y'all don't. Y'all with me, right? He said, come on out of that mess. Come on over here, baby. Let me just, yeah, sit down over here and let's rest and talk for a little bit. Let's lighten that load. Get that stuff off of you. You can't carry it. It's too much. It's, it's the world's mess and he's trying to. He said, his is easy and his is light. That sounds like something we want to be connected with? Yeah. Absolutely. I'm tired of trying to carry the, the world's. Can't carry the world's stuff. We can't. We'll burn ourselves out, burn ourselves up. And we see a lot of that going on. Might be feeling it tonight. Guess who's hearing this word? <laughs> That's right. Yeah, I knew that would probably go over like a brick. That's okay, though. We're almost home. James chapter 4. <laughs> I'm kidding. Woo, we have a good time tonight, right? Because this is for our kids, not for James. Go to Hebrews and take a right. We'll be right over there. 
James chapter 4. No place for the devil. Because just the, the, the natural stuff, that physical separation is not the only things we can do. James chapter 4. We're looking at giving no place to the enemy. How to keep him out. How to shut him down. Verse 7. Just pull out this one verse for now. Submit yourselves to God. Resist the devil. And he will flee. So many times I've heard that verse, and you may have too, but we don't hear it in its entirety. We don't hear it in context. Well, just resist the devil and he's going to flee. No, nah, you better back it up because we're not getting all of it. And that might be why he's not leaving. You can't just resist him if you haven't submitted to the Lord. One verse says, humble ourselves unto him and then he'll exalt us. But you have, if you don't submit to the, to the Lord, how are you going to get power to resist? If we haven't submitted to him, if we haven't yielded to him, that's why I said, even when we let off of this, you can't just love the idea of Jesus and not embrace his word. Because right. if we do that, then the time when the enemy come around, we don't have anything to fight with. We don't have any strength. We don't have any power. He says, submit to the Lord, then resist the devil, and he will flee. That's what Jesus did, right? He didn't, he didn't walk his own way, even when he'd been 40 days fasting. I mean, you talk about hangry on another level. He had to be. I go a day, and man, it's like, that's my shirt tonight, y'all. Y'all see all I need? Jesus, word, T-bone. So feel free. I'm, I'm free after this. I mean, might be a little late tonight, but tomorrow I'm good. I just, I'm just, anyway. He could have, but he didn't. He said, it is written. He didn't even, man, he has given us such practical application for how to put the enemy in his place. Didn't try to get all fancy. He wasn't debating the devil. He just gave him the word. Talk to the. All right, we'll go. Ephesians 4, this will wrap it up. Now I don't feel like I got no feet left. My toes is all chopped off. <laughs> Ephesians chapter 4. Just some real practical, how to, no place to the devil. Verse 22 of Ephesians. Put off concerning the former conversation. Means not just our word, but our action and all. The old man. Be renewed in the spirit of your mind and put on the new. You know, it's, it's, it, that's, uh, you know, really looking at not just the concept of being saved, but actually walking it out and letting the word come into us and change our lives. Put on the new man which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. And he begins to lay out some things. And each one of these is actually a way that we can shut the enemy out and, and give him no place, no, uh, no uh, opportunity is what it means when he says no place to the enemy, no opportunity for him to access my life. Uh, speak truth. Put away lying. Speak truth with his neighbor. He remembers one of another. Be angry, but don't sin. There's a, there's a righteous anger that probably we need to tap back into, in a sense. Uh, how are you going to come against injustice if you don't get mad about people getting treated unfairly? I mean, the, the Word talks about the Lord getting angry on occasion. So evidently, there's a way to be angry and not sin because he never sinned. There's a way to, to, to have that anger point us in the right direction Maybe put us on the right path. Maybe even fire us up and motivate us, but not consume us. How are you going to deal with racial injustice or trafficking children or any of these things? If you, don't, if it ain't, if you ain't get mad enough to get off the couch. <laughs> Be angry, but don't sin. Don't let it consume you. You know, that's, that's, that's how people blowing up abortion clinics. I think you went a little over the mark. Be angry, but don't sin. Don't let the sun go down into wrath. Verse 27, neither give, what, place, opportunity to the devil. Let him that stole steal no more. Let him work for, you know, work for, for you know, your checks for your giving, not your living then even. Rather, let him labor and work with his hands that which is good so that he has to give. Verse 29, let no corrupt communication come forth out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of building up. Got to watch your words too, amen? 
It says, by our words, death and life, by our words, you know, condemned or not. He said that it may minister grace to the hearers. In verse 30, grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you've been sealed until the day of redemption. That, that, when, when he's unctions you to move, move. Because it talks about there is a grieving that we can actually, and I, it's, it's almost like cal- getting a callus. Anybody ever had a blister on your hand? I got, I got a nice one right here from running a shovel the other day. Hadn't done it in a while, and that said, man, it'll, it'll get you. You know, it, it, but you build up a callus, and it, it, it makes you a little more impervious to it. But we don't want a calloused heart to the Lord because it, it's, a, it's a deadening. It puts something between us and him. And he said, if you grieve the Holy Spirit, you're in essence putting a callus on your heart, making it hard and harder to get into and harder for him to be able to minister to us. So we be mindful of that, you know. And if, we, and if we've grieved him, ask for forgiveness. Lord, forgive me. Forgive me for not realizing the importance of instantly obeying. We all want our kids to jump when we say jump. Lord, we're his kids. He wants you to move. He wants you to move. You know, because if, if we don't understand to move now, when we're, when we're about to step into a minefield, one step may be too late. And if we've not trained our spirit to be instant in obedience, we might be in a step on one before we realized it. And God didn't want that. Does that make sense? Grieve not the Holy Spirit, whereby you're sealed to the day of redemption, that all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, evil speaking, all this be put away. And as if he didn't, shouldn't even have to put this, but he did. Be nice. <laughs> be nice. Be nice. Kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving. Man, he's talking about putting on Jesus and then letting Jesus show out through us. Let's stand. Give no opportunity. Father, let us not just be hearers tonight, but doers. Holy Spirit, I, I, I know we've, uh, you, you've given us some things to chew on tonight. You've given us some things to, to really meditate on. So I'm asking you long after this night, long after this service, Holy Spirit, let this word come alive in us. Let it become real to us. Take it from this corporate setting to an individual thing with us so that we can have truth. Truth brings freedom. Lord, we can have truth and have application of this word into our lives so that we can have better lives, so that our lives glorify you. Lord, show us how to shut the door to the adversary. The word says, give him no place, no opportunity. I, I don't, I don't want to open any door for him to access my life, access my family, access my finances, my body. I don't, I don't want him in none of my stuff. We don't want him in none of our stuff. So show us, show us Lord, how to shut the doors and keep them shut. Give him no access. Lord, if he's, if he's run in, then we're going to run him out tonight in Jesus' name. Because, Lord, we can, we, can, we can recognize those things. Begin to just correct our lives. And thank you for, you wouldn't even bring this word if you didn't love us so much. You said, whom the Lord loves, he corrects. So thank you, Lord God. Correction always just brings direction. Lord, it brings me closer to you. It brings me closer to the things that I've been praying for. Lord, it helps me just sidestep all the, the delays, all the detours. God, I, I, I just, yeah, I just heard fast track. He is, man, he is wanting to put us on the fast track, y'all. The fast track. I'm talking about the, the hammer lane. faster than you ever thought possible to get to your destination, to get to that thing that you've been believing for. And he said, tonight he's given us some keys to get there. So Lord, I thank you that we're going to hear and do and apply and learn and be teachable and humble. Give you praise every single step of the way in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, let's give him praise. God bless you, man. We so appreciate you being here tonight.